Hey YouTube, Alex here with Alex's at Gomids, and in today's video, this is a topic I've been wanting to address for a while. And as you can see, this is one of my male Chinese water dragons. This is one that I actually had come through my work, and believe it or not, uh, in my opinion, he looks pretty terrible. I'll rearrange him so you guys can see him in the light, but you can see he... He's blue. You know, if I get his chest up, he's got like this very green tur turquoise look. And you know, a lot of people would probably think, wow, that's a really pretty water dragon. That's sort of what I want to talk about in this video is why blue water dragons are bad. You can also see if you're paying attention, his legs, he is lacking muscle tone. And so his legs kind of pop up like this. It's not going to affect the quality of his life by any means. He's actually a lot better than when I got him three months ago now. And so what I wanted to highlight in this video is, as I stated, why blue water dragons are a, are a bad thing. So unlike some of my older videos where you've seen Ozzy and you've seen Harriet, my uh, adult Chinese water dragons, this is a young male. From what I understand, he's probably around a year and a half old, definitely stunted, but growing quite well. He's got a bit of a nub tail and you can see all of his spikes are actually pretty messed up because he hasn't had perfect sheds from the get-go. You can see like in this case this spike is taller. These are all shorter and stub. Again, it's more of an imperfection thing. It's not going to affect the quality of his life now that he's actually receiving proper husbandry. One thing I wanted to note is his blue coloration. So Often to not, you will see water dragons in, say, like the Facebook forums that are completely blue. You see some that look like him right now that are this washed out blue color. And the main reason for that is this lizard, now he's getting better, but when I received him, I couldn't even see these stripes. I'll see if I can get a photo up here of him the day I picked him up. And the reason why is people do not gut load their feeder insects properly. With water dragons, basilisks, any of these bright green lizards that are insectivores, what happens is that when you do not feed them a varied diet of well gut loaded insects, what happens is they are unable to develop yellow pigmentation. And so they get those yellow pigments from different carotenoids. Specifically in my case, uh, I'll leave a little card like up in the top video corner. When I gut load all my feeder bugs, the bugs are getting fed carrots, squash, sweet potato, collard greens. If my sail fins don't finish their salads the day before I gut load bugs, they get those. And so what you're able to see now is just after three months of this lizard being in my care, as I said, his body is still this washed out blue, but you can see he's starting to finally get yellow. And he had none of that. And his jaw is finally getting some of the reds. And so what I am hoping will happen is within the next two years, he will be completely green, like all of my healthy water dragons that I've been raising up from the start. And so really the, the importance of this video that I wanted to cover is his physical deformities aside, I have never owned a blue water dragon. Uh, this is a first for me because usually I don't take in sick or just imperfect animals. I try to breed water dragons. And you can see too from his previous husbandry, his fingers are a little stunted or deformed. He's finally starting to shed right there. Uh, but the point is, is that now that the water dragons are no longer being wild caught, I'm really trying to salvage as many wild caught animals as possible. So if he ends up being perfectly healthy in a couple of years to where I think that this animal could breed without any effect uh, to his physical health, I'll get him in the breeding rotation. And if not, I'll more than likely find pet only home to the best of my abilities. So point being is that blue water dragons, a lot of people think they're pretty. One thing that I'll also note, you can see his eyes are a lot clearer. I have a light over here just because my ambient light in this room is not the best. So I'm hoping it's showing this blue sheen that he has and you can finally see the stripes are coming through, but notice how clean his eyes are. And so when I also, when I got this lizard, and I'll re-put up the photo of the day I got him, his eyes were like droopy. And so 
Carotenes aside, like you said, the color enhancing pigments, water dragons rely on beta carotenes to convert and make their own vitamin A. In a sense, it's just retinoid metabolism and uh, carotene metabolism. And so because of how this lizard was not fed a proper diet of gut loaded bugs and a varied one, his eyes were starting to be watery because if they do not have the ability to have beta carotene in their diet and make that vitamin A, they start having eye issues. And so you can see he his eyes cleared up really well, which makes me happy. Like he will run full sprint across the cage, even with these grasshopper legs, as some people like to call it. And that's because he's finally starting to build up his reserves of carotenes and he's converting those into vitamin A as he sees fit. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll put him up and I'm gonna grab one of my females so maybe i'll grab a couple females for this video and we can look at some healthy examples of how a you know a green water dragon a true green asian water dragon should be so here are a couple girls that i've been raising up before anybody comments telling me that this is a young male believe it or not this one is cycled infertile eggs so this is just a more well-defined female but as you can see in the light the stripes are the only thing that is blue and a little bit of blue on the face, but do you see how compared to the male that was carotenoid deficient, these are like a rich green water dragon. So like with this girl, of course she's in shed, but one thing I wanna notice is look how green her chest is. And you can clearly see where this old skin is about to shed off and how that's like a true rich emerald green with a little bit of blue in the lips. I don't want to bug her too much because I think she might be gravid and carrying some eggs. But again, that's sort of what you want to see in a healthy sub-adult Chinese water dragon. This girl's maybe two feet with the tail. You know, she's a, she is a two-year-old bee, or uh, coming up on two years old. This is one of my European imports that I got from Michael Barrera before they closed down. So if she's to my knowledge, unrelated to everything in the country. I still don't know if she was wild caught and just came from Europe or if she truly was a, uh, a captive born one. Either way, it just makes me happy that she's unrelated. And then I'll bring this girl right back here. So this girl is a wild caught one that I picked up a couple of years ago, sent it to a friend, and then I finished school. So again, that's the, you can see too, this one had some of the, the weird grasshopper looking legs, but it doesn't allow you, know, she's in a five foot tall cage, so she climbs perfectly fine. But again, what I wanna emphasize here is that rich green color, uh, really highlighting and showing how a healthy Chinese water dragon should be. Blue water dragons may be cool. Some people will tell you it's a morph. Uh, the reality is the only thing that isn't cool about blue water dragons is the fact that somebody is just trying to pass off or brag about having an animal that is nutrient deficient. Vitamin A is a very important fat soluble vitamin. I know that vitamin a little too well since I have unintentionally overdosed my animals on it in the past. So I really hope that this video helps people learn uh, and ideally appreciate that if you are a dedicated keeper and you're feeding your lizards well, you know, a green water dragon is supposed to be green. That is what we want to see. Blue water dragons aren't cool. They may look pretty, but the reality is, is that pretty look of a blue water dragon is only going to lead to a nutrient deficient animal and an animal that'll likely fail to thrive in the coming years. So these are these two ladies. And I figured for my last example, what I'll do is I will try to film a uh, an in-betweener, which may surprise you, but We'll finish with that. Alrighty, so to finish up the video, when I said a in-between specimen, uh, this is an animal where I wanted to wrap up by showing you something where a lizard looks perfect, but was actually subject to this vitamin A deficiency. So this is Charlie. This lizard is actually seven years old. So he's a big boy, you know, he's got a super long, you know, tip of, I can't really get his full body in the image of the camera here but I wanna say he's probably like 32 inches, you know, average male. And so one, he's in shed. This is actually some stuck shed that he had when I got him. Like you can see he's, he's definitely been through the ringer, but do note how his legs, if the light would angle itself, they don't always wanna cooperate. And I really don't like handling my water dragons too much, but you can see he has this bluish tint, right? 
And so he is an animal that has been living for seven years on a mixed diet of crickets and superworms. And this, I think, is a good example showing how these lizards, unfortunately, are too hardy for their own good sometimes. So with Charlie now, he's finally going through his first shed with me, which is why he's this really dark color. So this is all old shed that's been stuck and then he's gonna shed his back off in a few. One thing that I wanna highlight is because of how he has been nutrient deficient for so many years. Do you notice how he's got this underbite and he's got a little bit of red, but he's not as vibrant as say Ozzy, right? Like my male, I, Ozzy is my male water dragon who's seven years old. I'll put a photo up of Ozzy and Ozzy is a very rich green color. And while Ozzy does have a lot of blues, you can at least see Ozzy's stripes. And you can see how, because of since Charlie was not fed a proper diet, you can hardly make out any stripes or pattern. He looks patternless. And unfortunately, Charlie is what many people see as the gold standard for a healthy water dragon, when in reality he is, in my opinion, far from it. Is he surviving? Yes. Is he thriving? Absolutely not. Now, that being said, he's definitely enjoying uh, his big spacious setup. He's in a six foot tall enclosure. He's got a couple ladies in with him, which he has been appreciating. But again, I wanted to sort of show you this in between case where this is physically a healthy male, but he could be healthier. You can tell even from off the bat, he was never kept with high enough humidity. His tail spikes are nice and tall, but his back spikes are not. And that's because this is from literally seven years of imperfect sheds. And so I won't be surprised if a couple of these fall off because who knows how many layers of stuck shed are on here. And I know this isn't like the picture perfect water dragon and that's what I'm trying to emphasize is that we are still advancing our care for these lizards. I am still learning from them and while I'm pretty confident in a couple of years with uh, my care techniques and some good gut loaded bugs, Charlie will be up to 100%. It really just shows how resilient these lizards are um, and how many years of, in my opinion, improper care they can survive under. So we'll finish the video with a more positive note. Right he. So to conclude this video, I figured I'd show y'all Harriet, who is my pride and joy. This is my very first water dragon, and she's still rocking. I have now just had her for over 11 years. So I got her in September 2013, and I'm filming this video in October uh, 2024. So this is an example of what you want with a water dragon. You can see with her age, her colors have faded. But again, if you look at her chest, you can see how she's got the green right here. So even though she's got faded green, that is literally a byproduct of the fact that she's over a decade old. So that is something to consider. You know, if you adopt an older water dragon and you're watching this video and you're asking yourself, well, how come my water dragon that's 12 years old looks blue? That's more of a faded thing. But if we look at her legs in some of these areas where that green is still prominent and pretty, we can see that she is not a carotenoid deficient female. Especially since for a female, she's got these, uh, the red labial scales and stuff on her, uh, on her face, if the camera will pick that up. And most people have tried to tell me countless times that Harriet is a, a stunted male because only the males get the pink and that's so far from the truth. The other reason I know she's not a male is because she's had over a hundred eggs and dozens of babies. So I'm pretty, pretty sure she's a female. But with that in mind, thank you all so much for watching. I know this was a little bit more of a casual video than what I typically do. To be totally honest with y'all, I'm just trying to make YouTube videos that I enjoy while also providing some, you know, non-drama education, if you will. And in all honesty, to me being able to share my appreciation for these amazing lizards, you know, the Indo-Chinese water dragon, the Asian water dragon, green water dragon, whatever you want to call them, species is Physignathus cosicinus. They are without a doubt one of my all-time favorite lizards on this planet. And so by providing a video like this, which will hopefully help you further your care, as far as how, making sure you are gut loading your feeder bugs, you will have a water dragon like Harriet for many years to come. Without further ado, I'm Alex of Alex's Agamids. Feel free to like, comment what you thought, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Adios.